Morning guys, it's the 1st of February and it's Friday. It's going to be fencing Friday from now on. I'm going to do a video at least once a week and hopefully on a Friday. So today I'm going to talk about the basics you're going to need. Now this is for anybody wanting to replace just a bog standard garden fence with wooden posts, wooden panels or you know trellis work or anything like that. Before I start getting into using concrete products where you're going to need a, a big grinder or like I've got, I've got um, a Husqvarna chop saw um, and drills for drilling things to walls. This is literally what you would need to put two posts in the ground, a panel in between and fix it. So the first thing you're going to need um, is hopefully because you've taken a fence down or you're going to be taking a fence down. So let's pretend there's a fence there. You have to take it down. So the first thing is a crowbar or a flat bar. You use these for prying the old panel away from the post. Um, they're pretty easy, pretty standard. Um, it's just a flat crowbar, basically. I like this because it's got the little indentations and by the time you've hit it through the panel, as long as the nails aren't too big or the screws aren't too big, it's known no of broken or it, it does break them. Um, this allows you to pry it off as well. So the second thing to go along with that, I'm trying to do this in the van because you'll see in a minute it's frozen outside. There's obviously a hammer, basically. Plain and simple. Everyone knows what a hammer does. So once you've then taken the panels off the posts and you've left with the posts, I'll show you the tools that you need to take the posts out with. But to set a string line up, you'll need a string line. These are pretty inexpensive. You can see it's been used and abused. You are going to need um, a saw because I can pretty much guarantee that you're either going to get one that's going to need an inch, two inch, a few feet off at the end. They never normally 10, 11, 5 sections. Now a section, when I talk about section, that's two posts and a panel in between. Um, whether that's starting from a wall or the other end, a section to me is two posts with a panel in the middle. Um, next, tape measure. Because you're going to need to know how deep your holes are and if you're working on a hill, they tend to go down or they go up. So you need to work out from the other side of the post how far it is down so you know when you stick your panel there it's not going to be sticking above the post or the post not going to be sticking above the panel um, a couple of a little added extra because i'm lazy as a screw, screwdriver now you can use manual i'm pretty sure nowadays everybody has got a cordless screwdriver or a corded one you can get away with corded it's not a problem i like this one because it's a pneumatic and when you're taking old screws out it smacks them so they actually come out rather than this just turning and threading the hell out of the um, the screw. So they are a few of the basic tools you are going to need. I'm going to go show you the manual tools in a second which include, now these are what I know the, the names of, I will, I will um, probably give each thing two names because it's what I've seen them about but what I mainly use them so if you see me doing a fence and I say I'm going to use X and you'll know what it is so for the digging tools I use it what I've been told is a grafting spade it's a long handled spade that allows you to stand up dig the ground without being three or four foot you can get post hole diggers that are like standard spades of a longer um, blade on them I don't like them um, they cause too much problems anyway that is to me is a grafting spade it has been known i have seen them advertised as rabbiting spades but for the purpose of this it is going to be called a grafting spade now um i have a breaking bar but it is also called a stomper for me because once you've put your post in position you've poured the, the dry mix concrete mix around it you can then flip it up so it's got a big ball on big knuckle on the end and you can hit the concrete down to compact it which firms the post up so that'll be two names for that bar Shirollers 
I don't know if they're actually called that. I've even seen them being called scissor grips, just things like that, which are basically two spades with two handles joined together so you can stick it in the ground, pull it together to grab the soil and then pull them out. So that being said, let's go and we'll have a look outside. You'll see why I'm trying to sit in the van as much as possible in a minute because we've had the last three days it's been minus between minus two and minus six. Um, we had a light snow yesterday but we always get on with it. So I'll see you in a minute. Alright guys, it's been a couple of days since I made the first part of this video. Um, it just got a bit too cold. I just wanted to get on with the job. So this is the second part or just the rest of the tools you're going to need. So the first one I was talking about is a grafting spade. This is a, a big long heavy duty spade. Only a smallish one at the end. It's only about four inches wide. 10 inches long. Um, it just gives you that edge to uh, dig the ground out first and test to see where the concrete is. Um, and I like the height. It's a proper fencing spade basically because if you get them half that height, you're already down here. So it saves you back quite a lot. Next one is a manual breaker. So you've got the two inch chisel head on one side. It is a stomper as well. There's a knuckle that I'm talking about. So once you've um, got your post in the right place, you've filled it full of uh, dry mix and then you can stomp it down, tighten it down just to firm it up. Uh, the concrete will do the rest, but which way you're um, putting the next section in, it helps. Rollers or scissor grips, as I've seen them called. Pretty self explanatory, really. And um, these ones are steel. Um, I have seen them on wooden and fiberglass handles, but they tend to go here. So they are literally hold them together, push them in the ground, pull them together. So once you have used your grafting spade to dig the soil, I will show you in a minute, um, you can then use these to pull the soil out with. Couple of, couple of tools that don't really need explaining really. Saw, because pretty much guarantee that not one of them is going to be equal. Uh, spirit levels, make sure everything's really nice and level. I tend to use this one, which is about three foot, something roughly like that. Ooh. So about three foot. You can use bigger ones, but to be honest, it's probably not even worth it. Shovel for cleaning up and moving larger amounts of soil. Um, yeah, again, I don't think I really need to explain how to use one of these. Uh, little border for uh, spade, should I say? Um, I quite like these, just purely for the fact of size. I can move just as much soil with this as I can with that. Um, it's lighter, um, and these are good as well if you're using concrete gravel boards. Very not to be fair, just just to level the ground off a little bit. If it's all up and down, um, you can use one of them. rake yeah, again I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain what to do with this um, but it's just for when you've dug your holes you put the fence up you're going to be left with like little patches of where the soil mounds up from when you've taken the, the soil out of the ground to fill your hole to dig your holes should I say this just helps break it up and spread it out a little bit so it just looks like a little bit neater Um, if you are going back and forth and you've got a lot of concrete to take away or a lot of rubbish you know you could you, you could use a wheelbarrow you know I don't tend to take one that often but you know it's always handy to have a wheelbarrow if you have uh, a drill you'll need some electrics you might need a cable uh, a reel reel of cable a uh, big extension lead depending on where you're working from um, but that is it you don't really need a huge amount um, but they are the things that you would need if you do it on a regular basis. You can get away with like standard spades and stuff like that. It's just going to take you longer. Um, so what I'm going to do is flip you around. I've got some fencing to repair on this job, um, so we'll do that, and I'll show you how to use the tools basically. All right. So on this job, it was one of my regular jobs, but he's retiring, so or well, it's cut right back, so he doesn't need me as often. So I just come in now and again just to repair the fences because a good old horse is a big old beast. He does this all the time. Um, I 
think I've actually already replaced this section. I've definitely replaced the one next to it, and he's gone through that as well. It's absolutely crazy. I mean, I don't mind because you know it gives me work. Um, but this post, I can only tell you, I can take it out. You know, the, the horse has done a really good job on it. Um, but what I'm going to do? Follow that. See, I mean, it's not even concreted in. Um, I'll put that back for now. So I'll show you what I normally do. So on a normal post, I mean this is a bit of a pants. I mean, wish post to show you because there's no concrete around it. Or not that I can see. So normally what I'll do is I'd use a grafter. And make a hole like that. I mean by now on a normal fence post you'll probably hit concrete. So you just do that and you find where the concrete is. A little tip if you've got concrete to break. If you do that and find the concrete and then move away from the post and find where the concrete ends if you dig next to the concrete when you come to break it the concrete's got somewhere to fall so rather than trying to break the concrete when it's compacted and it's got nowhere to, to go it's better just to dig a hole down the side of the concrete hit the concrete and it's more likely to break because it's got a weaker spot so what we need to do now is use this to break the Soil up, and this is where the scissor grips come in. Pull them apart and lift down. Doesn't always work as easy as that, but this ground is it's quite quite nice actually. I've worked on this ground before. So that's it. And we are working to two foot, although I don't think this is actually two foot in the ground. Maybe. No need to stick a string line on this either because I'm going from one post to another. I'll stick a rail up and make sure it's in the right place. I will add, and not always as easy as this to dig. You always know, excuse me, you'll always know if you've dug the hole right and you're only as wide as these, when you get down to the bottom of the hole, when you pull them apart and lift up, they no longer pull any soil out, you know you've roughly got two foot. Okay guys, so I've got the four rails on. Here's his way of making sure this is level excuse me, or the right height is by measuring the top of the post there to the top of the first rail, same as on that side. Then as long as it's the same here, you know it's roughly level with the two posts. It doesn't really matter in this situation. The fence is a bit hit or miss, um, but it's roughly the same. Um, so now the hole's just the right size, the right depth, should we say, and to level her up. Everyone on the side, in the back, the back end a little bit. I've already opened, pre opened the bag of mix just because I'm on my own today. Make sure you go all the way around. My labour seems to think it's alright on just one side. So, double check. The one thing I don't like about post mix, it's too fine. So to stomp it up, you need to put a bit of soil in to give it a bit of subsidence. So just be careful when doing this because you can put your post out. There we go, nice and solid. It's just a matter of putting the hole back in. Now if you if there's an uh, soil uh, concrete in it, so there's gonna be an excess of soil probably, not much. 
they will be. solid enough. You can wet these up. I can pretty much guarantee this time of year it's going to rain at some point in the next week. Um, so if it hasn't already soaked up enough moisture from the ground, it'll get rained on. So this is where the rake comes in. We've got a little excess of soil around here. Let's see if you can see that. Can you see that? Okay, so it's just a matter of not necessarily getting rid of it, just breaking it up and moving it around. Just so it looks prettier. It looks like you actually care about the job. That's how I'd reset the post. I haven't got to nail that up yet. Um, but in this purpose, we're just showing you how to set a post. This is for post and rail. I will be doing one on standard fencing, but I'll just link this to the back of the part one of the thing that I'm doing. I'll see you guys later.